Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're working on a 2000 Chevy Tahoe with a 5.3 LS. Has a few weird issues going on. Let's dig into it. See if we can learn something and make it run good. Coolant temperature sensor circuit high voltage. Last test failed. This ignition failed. Since cleared, passed and failed. Engine misfire, obviously. We still have no temp gauge. Man, I hate stuff like this. I mean, it's my job. It's probably super easy for somebody that's spent a whole lot of time on these 5.3s in this body style. They probably like, yeah, oh, there's a spot in the harness or something you gotta look for. Yeah, we're back to misfires on cylinders number seven and eight, like a boatload of misfires. The back two cylinders. Our temp is back now. There you go. It's gonna shut off again. Usually it'll run forever without the scan tool plugged in. And as soon as we plug in the scan tool, it goes straight to crap. So we gotta work this with what we know. Temp gauge. The throttle hung that time. Weird. Yeah, she's acting all sorts of funny. Temp gauge is super wacky. It's something somebody did. It's gotta be. Let's watch it for a sec. Let me rev it some. Yeah. And we have a new coolant temperature sensor. So we ran through <clears throat> the all data checks I know this seems like overkill for a $20 sensor, but the one that was in it was brand new and I was really questioning whether it was any good or not. So I ran through the all data check and it said replace the sensor. So we're going to do that now and see if the outcome is any different than it was before. We also have to hook the PCM back up here because part of the all data check was to undo all this. All right, here we go. We're going to fire it up and see if our temp gauge still goes wacky. It's got a little bit of a cold knock. We'll see if it'll find its idle now. We did have everything unhooked and we unhooked the PCM, so. Yeah, it doesn't want to idle. If I take my foot off the accelerator, it dies. A little bit of a misfire. There it goes. It's trying to find the idle now, so I'm not on the accelerator. And that's where we're at. It's starting to idle. Temp's starting to come up a little bit. Still has a little bit of a misfire which I'm sure, again, is on cylinder six and, or uh, seven and eight. Even though that went away for several days, it's back now. You can probably see it in the camera. So our scan tool's not plugged in. Temperature's coming up. Man, I don't know for sure what's going on. Let's just let it run here and let the temp come up. And uh, then we'll rev it a little bit and we'll see if the temp gets all weird again. There has got to be a short somewhere in this electrical system. There has to be. I know that's bad to say because then you get tunnel vision and you're looking for a short and it could be something else. It's probably something so simple. Somebody smarter than me would probably already have this thing figured out maybe. But this is, uh, I've been trying to do it by the book. It's still unhappy. But the misfires on those back two cylinders and when it first came here with those misfires, I was skeptical, like what are the chances you're gonna have a misfire in seven and eight? You know, opposite sides of the motor all the way at the back, whatever. So I swapped the coil first, just the coil, with the cylinder ahead, so I swapped five and six, swapped them ahead, same, didn't change. Swapped the plug wires, same. Swapped the spark plugs, same. So that tells me it's not in the ignition system. You sure about that's not why? I don't think it's fuel related. We have good fuel pressure and somebody has replaced the regulator, the fuel pressure regulator. The only abnormality that I was seeing was the coolant temperature. 
it would drop off it would go to negative 39 degrees and then back up down usually when you revved it when you got after it above 2500 rpms and that that's why i was like there's okay it's a short the battery was trash the ends were trash like we we did the grounds on the motor you know logical steps forward and then well let's run through the all data and test the sensor circuit and see what's going on and and we may have cleared up the coolant temp sensor issue but we still have that misfire on seven and eight but we're going to flow test the injectors and see if we can see any issue with the injector on cylinder number eight so our scan tool is all set up here we're going to cycle number eight It sure seems like it's doing its job. That's number seven. Number six. Number five. All right, so I discovered as I was removing the spark plug from number eight that it was a little bit loose. Here's what it looks like. If I can get the camera to focus on it. Hopefully you guys can see it. It's kind of focused on my face. So it's pretty black. Foul. But I had previously moved this plug from 6 to 8. And nothing changed. We have ignition. I also moved the coil. And I moved the spark plug wire. But it was a little bit loose. Maybe I left it loose and that's the issue here. I should probably swap it again. Maybe I'll swap it with, um, I'll swap it with 2. We'll swap the plugs again and we'll see how it does. Here's the plug out of number two. So you can see it. So we're gonna put this in the eight hole and we'll put the eight plug in the two hole. Let's see if it's any different at all. It's running, it's missing again a little bit. So we're counting misfires in cylinder number two now. And we're not counting any misfires in cylinder number eight. We have some misfires in cylinder number six and cylinder number two. Number two, is the problem child right now and cylinder number six which is weird because i didn't even touch six maybe for whatever reason number two is misfiring and it's picking up some of that on six i guess we better shut it down before it gets too hot and call for some plugs and wires we'll do that now we're gonna try and make some progress on the tahoe again we've got brand new double platinum ac doco plugs and a duralast gold eight millimeter wire set and let's see if this is the last of the issues that we had with this thing all right we got all of our new plug wires and plugs installed on both sides let's fire it up oh she sounds good let's see Sounds pretty good so far. Let's fire up the scan. Let's go to our misfire graphic. He sounds much better. Let's see if we pick anything up. Let's see if we got any currents. That's our current list right there. We're not picking up any current misfires. So I'm gonna let it come up to temperature and then we'll take it down the road and see if we got it fixed. All right, we're gonna take off and drive the Tahoe and see how it does. It's running really good right now. It's a lot of lessons to be learned on this thing. Lessons I already knew and some that I didn't pay attention to. Our biggest thing now is that we don't have any more issues with the coolant temperature gauge because I think what's happened is when that gauge would drop off and the computer thought it was 39 degrees below zero, it would richen everything up cold and that led to issues with our spark plugs the wires looked like the original um wires so yeah let's replace those as well as long as we're at it but we're in really good shape right now i don't think it's run this good since it was dropped off so we'll fly down the road i got the scan tool with me just in case we get a check engine light or something but right now it's it's fantastic oh yeah that's how a 5.3 should run. I guess I'm not the biggest fan of what they come in, Silverados, because 
of the transmission and the interior is kind of rattling apart. I'm a Toyota guy, but man, those five threes, the LS is just, it is an awesome motor. It's pretty easy to work on, not a bunch of stuff that you don't need. It's pretty awesome. I wonder what he's gonna say. Betty thinks it hasn't ran this good in a long time. Now he did have the camshaft done in the lifters, and I think the plugs were done then, but I'm not sure about the wires. But yeah, right now it is perfection. So one of the lessons to take away from this that I already knew was tunnel vision. Like, don't get tunnel vision. It has to be this, it has to be this. I think we had a lot of different issues going on that we had to chip away and solve them one at a time to get to the end. I don't think there was any way around that. We had a ground issue for sure. We sorted out all the grounds. Then we had a coolant temp sensor issue. It would drop off and read like negative 39 degrees. So we had to sort that out. And then we still had a misfire. And the misfire would kind of come and go. It wasn't all the time. And now with the plugs and wires, it's this thing is beautiful. For a 23 year old vehicle, man, this is a really nice Tahoe. It's super clean inside really well taken care of <clears throat> 148,000 miles <clears throat> and we had to put a battery in it that battery was junk the one that was in here before you couldn't leave the key on for like three minutes and it would be so dead you couldn't crank the vehicle a winter time for us is coming it's right around the corner uh, it's September 6th or 7th right now so it's gonna start getting cold pretty soon and you can't have a battery like that here in Michigan. When it's 10 or 20 degrees in the middle of winter, a battery like that's not even gonna, it won't crank at all. So yeah, we're in really good shape. I'm amazed at how well it shifts too. It shifts so nice. It holds torque converter lock up like solid. What a good truck. When I started working on it, I saw the new parts and there's some issues here. The motor had been apart not long ago and there's always the chance that somebody you know nicked a wire pinched a wire didn't hook the grounds back up which we found some issues with and anytime somebody's had something apart you're always like man even if it's you we should be we should be like all right it's probably something i did in this case it was kind of a little bit of everything. It was like the whole kitchen sink. It was a little bit of something somebody did. It was a failure of a brand new part, plus failures of old parts, like the spark plugs that were probably were caused by the coolant temp sensor, even though it was brand new. According to the all data checks, everything with the, with the sensor said it was bad. I don't think it's a wiring issue. Checked it for like, uh, short to ground, short to voltage, everything was good. And like I said, for probably everyone else that does this every single day, they might've got to the solution a lot faster than me. I had a bunch of other stuff I was working on, so this was kind of like back and forth. Every day I would mess with it a little bit and make a decision on what we were gonna do. And here we are, we're complete. Thanks for watching.